the crypto market has started to pull back. You have a hard rejection for Bitcoin off of the 50 EMA. I'm going to cover the exact levels and what that means going forward and what is the real reason for this current pullback that's currently taking place and is there going to be any opportunity within the altcoin market despite the dump. So we're going to cover this and a whole lot more today and starting off over here with the banter bubbles chart on the hourly you can see a couple of altcoins are trying to make some sort of resurgence. One that stands out is Sandbox. Remember you do have the whole Apple metaverse play which is currently coming up. Uh, Render as well starting to turn green but otherwise for the most part a lot of the coins are looking red um, and it's a weekly open to the downside. Now one reason for this particular sell-off could potentially be this and it's by finance a lot over here. He says the treasury is about to dump $170 billion worth of treasury bonds on the market on Monday the 5th of June. So that's done th via auctions whereby they will be selling bonds and that is to raise capital to bring liquidity back into the market. And you can see if you have a look at this, this could have an effect on the market, but it's not something that we just found out about. We knew about this last week. So could that already be priced in? Is it just a little bit of de-risking? Uh, while bulls need to still step in every single day, they marginally have been defending the pivot levels. I'm going to give you the pivot levels today again. And we are have impending volatility, which is going to be coming into the market very, very soon. All metrics and all intents and purposes suggest that volatility is contracting more and more. And you expect an expansion from that volatility at any moment. So if you look at things like the weekly Bollinger Bands, those are squeezing in on each other. If you look at volatility indicators like the BBWP, uh, which suggests the width percentage of those Bollinger Bands, that also suggests volatility is going to be coming back into the market very soon. And the market tends to follow liquidity. So if you look over here from at uh, uh, Tom Dunleavy, another liquidity and risk asset chart for the people. Negative liquidity conditions should start up next week sometime. Before I carry on with that, let's quickly grab this tool over here, which is very useful. There we go. So you can see the liquidity is coming down. Will price follow? Well, the S&P 500 and the stock markets in general have been pushing towards new highs, at least in the past 12 months, which is typically a bullish sign. But you can expect that there will be some sort of pullback, uh, at least a throw back to support to retest if the breakout is real. And that means lower prices. Of course, in the short term, there would be a little bit of lower prices. So what does that mean for Bitcoin? On the weekly chart, the levels still remain exactly the same. We have our order block over here, which led to the big move up. And technically, price could still come back into that level to test it as a support zone, at least on a week basis. Will that happen this week? I don't know. We need to wait and see. The important part is X marks the spot. You don't want to see any closes below that level. So below the white 200 moving average over here, that level needs to be defended at $25,000 on a closing basis on the weekly chart. Shot. wicks into that area are okay and there would be opportunities to essentially get long in in the for an investment perspective okay also if you look over here at Jim Bianco there's a lot of speaking of which with Jim as well Jim and um, also well, who's the gold bug guy Peter Schiff and all these OGs the older guys within the space have been hacked on their Twitter if you go through to their Twitter account do not buy the meme coin which has been launched on their page uh, all of them have have been hacked. So that's just a side note. But this is a real tweet from him. He says, yeah, ETH addresses with non-zero balances just past 100 million, uh, which is twice what BTC has. Uh, thank ETH it's much wider smart contract adoption via NFTs and DeFi's. That's the reason, obviously, why uh, the addresses with non-zero balances, meaning that there's addresses that have actual capital in there, are ticking on up. So a big, big, big divergence over here from Ethereum towards the upside, uh, breaking above what Bitcoin has. And that's one of the narratives that are starting to build up steam. People are talking about ETH breakout levels. So we're going to look at the ETH levels as well shortly. And you have big whales which are starting to build massive leverage long ETH positions. So this guy at the moment is currently running a short on wrap BTC of 30, let's round it up, $30 million short, but he's currently long with about $55 million on ETH. So running a major, major position over here and he's starting to add towards that long. So is ETH really going to be the play? Well, we'll find out on today's show. That is something that we're going to cover. And what you need to look at is the ETH BTC chart in order to determine that. Now, very simply put, ETH BTC is ranging, but yes, Ethereum is starting to steal a bit of Bitcoin's thunder. 
under, at least in the short term. So what are the levels? Well, very simply, it's this. You can see for quite a long time, pretty much over the past year, you have a massive range over here that's been forming. And it's very clear to see the strong downtrend, the resistance level, which price needs to break out of. Is this the beginning of the breakout? Well, it very well could be. Uh, the more important part for me is the horizontals and what's going on over there. And yes, ETH BTC is breaking and holding above the mid-range. So as long as you're holding above that mid-range, you treat it like a range. That means that you would want to be, uh, if price holds this on, on ETH, you'd be long until the 0.75 level. So it's written over here. That's 75% of the way through the range. If it clears that level, well, then you can target all the way up towards the range high. And once you get here, you probably want to uh, take off that position because what do you do at range highs? Well, it's resistance and you sell. So you buy support and you sell resistance. So we'll keep an eye out on this. This is the daily chart. Be careful because it could still potentially be a fake out uh, whereby you have that deviation, right? So look at the deviation over here, deviation over here. Oftentimes it deviates and it just comes back down into the range. So wait for the retest into that mid range. It looks like we could be getting that any moment over the course of today or tomorrow that retest into the mid-range, hold that level, and then we start to have a trade setup. Uh, stop goes below there, and we're going long up towards the 0.75 and then the range high. Before we continue on, make sure that you smash the like button over here. It does help to get the show content out there. And then let me know in the comments if you are present. I see Teddy's there, Chaos, Jordan, Frank. We have Remco, Robert. We have Luba. Luba's always in the house. Frank. We have uh, Mustafa, Glenn, Bantagal. Welcome back, Bantagal. Mornay, uh, Marx. We got Reese, Rocket Fire. Thank you guys so much for joining. Smash the like button. It helps to get the show content out there because YouTube works on an algorithm, right? Uh, we try bringing alpha and high quality content, but not everyone in the world sees it because the algorithm doesn't give it to everybody. So uh, make sure that you get that algorithm ticking on over. So let's have a look at this in-depth chart that Tech Dev has given over here. This is on the BTC dominance and he says over here, uh, Bitcoin dominance is in redistribution. It does not necessarily mean that Bitcoin per se is bearish and gonna go down. Uh, it just means that alts likely outperform Bitcoin. No reason that it can't go parabolic at the same time. So so if this is going to play out with the ETH BTC uh, ticking on up and reclaiming key levels, holding that mid level and then targeting that 0.75 and the top of the range, then you can expect that naturally the risk will flow into the others, right? Into the other coins. And for that to happen, you'd expect Bitcoin dominance to break down. Now, a lot of this cycle has been compared to the 2015 cycle from a fractal perspective, there's a lot that looks very, very similar over there. So we kind of within this area over here with a, a Wyckoff distribution phase on the dominance, uh, which leads to obviously a markdown and a breakdown from that level. Have a look at the RSI, look at the comparison in a rising wedge and it starts to break down. And over here, you have a very, very similar picture where it's already started to break down from that level. So if that Bitcoin dominance does start to break, the important diagonal resistance or excuse me, diagonal support over here, you can expect that distribution could come into play. And if that does happen, look, if you look at the price, this is the price over here, prices are still rising, right? Look at, look at what happened back in 2015, 2016. We were in this level. Prices of Bitcoin continue to rise on up whilst altcoins started to outperform the market because obviously the Bitcoin dominance is breaking down, meaning that some of Bitcoin's thunder was going into that altcoin market. So here we have it. That's what the simple range is, right? And we already started to show signs of the breakdown of the diagonal. Look, it was in, remember, in a pennant over here. So price moving up into the pennant. It looked a bit like a flag that was forming at a stage, got into a tighter, tighter pennant and started to break down. Now, my next level, I'd be watching for throwback into the main supporting trend line, which is coming in at 45.55%. That's the level to watch. That means that if Bitcoin holds its key levels, because you have to hold it in context, right? Bitcoin needs to continue to maintain its uptrend and hold the key levels. If it can do that while simultaneously this is coming down, then of course, what does that mean? Altcoins are definitely going to outperform uh, because that is what Bitcoin dominance is telling us, right? The dominance is going elsewhere. So we'll focus on that over the coming weeks. How does this affect others and what exactly is others? Well, others is the market cap of all coins, excluding the 
top 10 coins within the overall market cap, right? So from uh, coin market cap or coin gecko 11 and downwards in the list, that is what others includes. And if you look over here at Don Crypto Trades, he says others is a good indicator of the altcoin risk sentiment. If it is going up, then it means that alts are gaining versus Bitcoin and other big caps and stables. Below are similarities between last cycle's uh, price and today, basically. So I'm not going to go through his entire fractal over here. You're welcome to go and read it. But essentially, you have a falling wedge formation and bear market bottom happened over here in 2019. Big push up, uh, hit the trend line, rejected off that, came into the bottom, which was uh, summer of 2019, which now we're going into the US summer of 2023. And that led to a break of the trend, big move up and then continuation. So where are we now? Well, you had the 2022 bottom, a push up, so initial wave, and you can see the range that he's got formed, right? So the top of the range, the bottom of the range. I'm going to show you my chart very shortly as well. Rejection of that level, sell off comes back into the bottom summer of 2023. Could this be the start of the breakout? And if so, what is your target? Well, your target would be over here at that 12.5. 37 level. So let's bring up my chart over here. This is essentially what I'm looking at. Uh, definitely think that price has mostly for the past years been stuck within this range. That range being 9.58 to 12. 0.24. So you guys know I like to play it safe. I'd rather wait for the extremes before I take a trade uh, or until key levels are regained. What would that level be? Well, if you look over here, I have this uh, diagonal. This line fits probably better than the one below that, but I took in a parallel level and just marked this zone as a general zone. So yellow area is kind of where I'm watching. I would at the very, very earliest enter into a trade if it continues towards the downside into others. If you get into that level over there at about 8.4, wait and watch for the reaction of that. That could be a small bounce, which gives you a small trade. But the real trade trigger only starts to take place, in my opinion, once you break above 9.58. So you need to break back into the range, right? And test that as support, hold that level, and then you can start to target up to this zone. So you're playing level to level. That's kind of the zones that I'm watching. And if it gets above here, yeah, we take some off the table, right? If it gets back above, it's fine. We just re-enter the same place on the retest of support. So that's the zones that we're watching. That's what we're looking at for other. There is something that's taking place over here. It's coming into the extremities. And that's the reason why this is the first time I'm bringing the other coins up for you um, since we've been doing the show. Okay. Bitcoin on the four-day chart over here. So very important. You guys know this chart well. It's the short, the medium, and the long-term moving average. And we have been waiting to see, is this going to be a low, higher low, and would this be the next high low? Well, last week, I gave you a certain level to watch. I said, as long as price doesn't come back below $26,304, then bulls hold the slight edge. And every single week, these bulls have been holding on uh, by an absolute thread, really, really just keeping the hope alive. And will this week be the same? Well, I think that if you want to be aggressive on your play and you don't want to wait, what you could do if you want to be more careful, you could probably raise this trend line now and say that this level should not be taken out. So that is, remember, on a closing basis, we really want to see bulls holding above this. If you start to see prices closing on a high time frame below that trend line, where's that trend line coming in? 26000 $818. So give or take $26,818. That is the level that I'm watching. I want to see bull spring price off of the long-term moving average, which you can see we just tagged back into that zone. And we need to push this candle up and start to close a green. If bulls want to keep hope alive, uh, then you're expecting that to be the next high low, right? Cool. That's that for Bitcoin. Let's move on to what's going on with the mining difficulty. So there's a new record for Bitcoin mining difficulty of a number too high for me to even know how to read. 50 gazillion uh, hashes have been achieved at a block height of 792,288. More computers are mining Bitcoin ever than before. Bitcoin is unstoppably bullish is what he says. So typically the point, the reason why I'm bringing this up is as that mining difficulty increases, the hash rate picks up and consequently it's what came first, the chicken or the egg. I've given you guys the joke, the answer to that joke a few times. So let me know in the comments if you remember what the answer is. But ultimately it's what comes first, right? 
right? Does price move first or does the hash rate increase first? But they tend to follow along with each other. So if hash rate is going to new all-time highs, then you expect price to do the same. And here you have it again, just a different picture, mining difficulty, price has been coming down. As soon as difficulty starts to tick on up, then what does that mean? It means that harder work has to be done to achieve, uh, to get the same amount of Bitcoin from each block, each 10 minute block. And therefore it becomes more expensive, right? The price tends to follow on and uh, it becomes more in demand. So have a look over here. He has the hash ribbons. This is the uh, Bitcoin bottom indicator using uh, Capriol Investments. Uh, that's the, the indicator over here. He uses the hash ribbons and you combine that with the MV. RVZ score, which essentially, what does it suggest? It suggests that the miners are becoming more and more profitable uh, because obviously you have the green, which is ticking on up above the gray. So the more that spreads, uh, the more the hash rate increases. And then you have the MVRVZ score, which once it leaves this green zone, every single time, if you zoom out, once you leave that green zone, that is typically where your bull market start to take place. So here we were in 2015, we leave the green zone, we come back for a bit of a retest, and then it's off to the races straight on up. Same thing happened over here, 2019, broke out of that level. Yes, we came back hard because of the black swan event. So those are unpredictable, came back into the green zone, but bounced straight off of that zone. And now you can see we're doing exactly the same thing. We've left the green band area over here, which is indicative that this is the start of a greater move. Remember, I know price is coming down in the short term right now. This is more for the high time frame. I'm talking in the long term, you would expect that this trend would continue. And as long as this leaves the green band uh, pressure on up and you're looking for this to be potentially your next high low. So that's all that we're focusing on. We've been waiting for days now, weeks actually, to confirm this as the next high low and for prices to continue on up. So Glassnode has also given four uh, of the in-depth reports tracking the behavior of particular subsets of long-term hodlers, those who are now experiencing the trials and tribulations of their first Bitcoin market cycle. And basically, if you look at this link, I'm not going to go into all of these. All I want to show you is from a pattern perspective, it's exactly the same. The green bands, that's where all the bottoms were formed within the market. And we've printed the exact same green bands as before. Everything looks identical. You can see the uh, histogram chart on the bottom as well. Same thing every single time this is created on-chain metrics uh, bottom formations. Willy Wu, he's also identified it using the cost basis analysis. And he says that shows that upside is looking better right now than downside. Summer months are typically flat or bearish, but every June inside the reaccumulation phase has been bullish. We're in uh, one such window right now. There's a window for BTC to rip in June. Uh, he says his educated guess would be uh, that we are a week away for the opportunity to open. So Again, each June that you come into this zone over here, uh, then you would expect that that is where price starts to tick on up and the accumulation zone is right on its way up for the markup phase. So S&P 500, look at Will Clemente. He says it's now back to the same level that it was trading at when the Fed started raising rates in March of last year, which is absolutely wild. If you think of that, remember how bearish things were March of last year when they said, well, the Fed's going to start to raise rates and it's going to absolutely annihilate and crush the markets. But price-wise, the trend trumps all, right? The trend is your friend until the end of the trend. And you have massive, massive moves which have taken place now. Uh, price already coming back to those zones. So a lot of the bears in complete disbelief. NASDAQ also reaching its highest price in over a year. S&P 500 breaking out, same also highest price in over a year. So continuing on up. Bespoke says, after a 50% drawdown though, FANG is now just 7.8% from its all-time high. So remember, it's a lot of these tech stocks which are bringing price up. Uh, which is why you need to track those, right? So the Microsoft, Tesla, NVIDIA, Apple, uh, Google, or Alphabet, those are the big five. Those are the big five within the S&P 500. And you want to keep a keen eye on those uh, charts. Why? Because those are the only ones that are bringing the S&P 500 up to the highest prices seen in the past year, which means 
If any of those charts start to turn back over, well, of course, then things are going to go down, right? Then it's going to start to look really, really bad and you want to exit your position. So that's really your barometer or your metric to consider the health of the crypto market is that correlation to the stock market. You want to see those five coin or those five, not coins, stocks continue in a healthy fashion. All right, moving on. Here is the S&P 500. I'm going to quickly move on to the daily. Uh, you'll remember, let's go in the four hour very, very quick. You'll remember we did have a short trade on over here. And this is why we moved the stop into break even. I told you guys, if you see price come back into this level, as soon as we saw this, we cut the position immediately. I said, if it comes back here and it ticks even one tick above, you're going to see an explosive breakout. That is exactly what took place, right? Because there's a lot of pressure that's built up here. A lot of people which have been trying to add to their short positions. So they were underwater over here, underwater over here. They kept adding margin, margin, margin. And then boom, that leads to a big breakout taking them out of those positions. But there could be a bit of a throwback from this region. So watch out for that throwback. If that happens, of course, crypto might come down a little bit further, maybe around that 25K zone. And that could present an opportunity. The point being on the daily chart though, you can see we've started to clear a major, major level of resistance, which is this whole gray box territory. And it's looking like we're successfully breaking out of the range. I don't want to count the chickens uh, before they hatch, but uh, this is starting to look like a breakout. I want to see a couple more days or potentially even a few weeks hold above the range high coming in at 41.74. If that does happen, then I would say, well, this is looking like a very, very solid breakout for the S&P 500. What about the DXY? The DXY was looking like a major pullback last week, but I told you we need to break below T1 for confirmation of that. Where's T1? It's this level right over here, 103.39. Until such time as the S&P 500 holds underneath, or excuse me, the DXY holds underneath that T1 level, you cannot confirm this as a full-on breakdown, which was ultimately what we wanted to see. Uh, good for risk on, right? Lower high and lower high. This is technically a support level and now we've come directly into that support zone and you can see the DXY starting to pick on up. So could there be continuation of this all the way back up to complete the W pattern? Well, it's still on the cards, right? That's all you need to know. It is still on the cards. It's not uh, voided yet until such time as you close a daily below T1 at 103.37. Next, let's have a look over here at Gareth Soloway. A lot of the guys are starting to focus on the VIX. You'll see it's a narrative on Twitter that's starting to pick up steam. And he says over here that the volatility index is at 1470 levels, which has not been seen in two years. Remember the, the VIX determines the volatility of the S&P 500. And it's all one big trade, guys. Remember the DXY, the S&P 500, the VIX, and Bitcoin all kind of operate together. Um, if you understand how they work, it's like the mechanisms within a car, right? You have the, the gear lever, the clutch, the accelerator, the brake, everything kind of works together to drive that vehicle. He says the last time that it was this low was when markets were topping in 2021. VIX gauges fear a low VIX signals investors believe there are no reasons to be concerned. Historically, that is a contrarian indicator. So Gareth Soloway views the VIX being this low as a rather bearish thing, suggestive that the VIX is obviously going to expand and that expansion will lead to lower prices. I'll give you my thoughts in a moment. So Charlie says of here, the VIX ended the week at 1460. Again, it's lowest level since February 2020, which was also the start of the pandemic. Uh, and then obviously we had the big, big move up, which led to that major capitulation in March of 2020. What are my thoughts? Well, simply put, this is my thoughts. If the VIX continues to contract into the zone, what do I mean by this zone? Well, between 1129 and 1520, I would say that's actually conducive to major rallies within the markets, within the S&P 500, within the stock market. Um, in general, you would expect that the DXY will start to come back down and both Bitcoin and the stock market should rally off of that. So if you see this, I would say that's bullish. If it spends time within here, that's all going to be bullish. This leads to your biggest, biggest runs. But, and this is the important part, but if I see it start to pick on up from here 
and break back out of this zone, well, then I'll change my narrative. Then I'm in agreement with Gareth Soloway um, and that Charlie Bellello saying that basically this could lead to a major, major crash. A increasing VIX, so if the VIX is starting to move towards the upside, then that's usually bearish for the markets. If the VIX is moving towards the downside, contracting, well, that's actually bullish for the markets where you see the biggest runs. So again, it's very, very simple. Um, you don't need to try and front run this, right? Don't and try and anticipate that this is suddenly going to turn on up and go all the way back up to these levels when it's actually going down because this can continue like this for quite some time. It can oscillate within this region and you get big, big moves within that zone. So all I'm saying, the VIX, something to watch, similar to all the other things I've outlined now. Uh, we we ride on the cusp of a very, very big move, high volatility, and you want to time all of this to perfection. Uh, it gets very frustrating, but this is what it is uh, being a pro trader, right? Right? You need to be patient. You need to sit on your hands and you need to time it to perfection. That's what trading's about, right? It's about getting your direction right, cutting your losses quick and timing things to perfection. So let's move on. Uh, Bitcoin over here, looking at the uh, Ichimoku cloud, same thing as last week. We still want to kind of see this level hold. Uh, last week I gave you, let me quickly put in this chart over here. Last week I gave you this as the level, right? 26,300, I said, we don't want to see prices closing below there. I'm going to say the same thing over here on this two-day chart. I don't want to see any candle closes below that level. It's in alignment with, us, with what I showed you on the four-day chart. 26,700. 189 ish dollars around here where these previous candle closes were. Uh, we need to start to close above that level and move out of the cloud quickly. Failure to do that will lead to further downside. And here you have Ethereum, same thing. Ethereum actually hasn't retested the cloud yet. I'm gonna give you a level as well. The last two day uh, open and closes on Ethereum comes into this zone at about, there you go. 1862. I don't really want to see any daily or two day closes below 1862. That's going to bring you back into the cloud and it could potentially lead to lower prices. ETH BTC, you can see as long as it continues this trend over here, you are already getting the cross on the Ichimoku cloud, which typically suggests that uh, let's quickly bring that up. There we go. Typically suggest that you'll have continuation and higher prices in the days and weeks to come. So the ETH BTC narrative could in fact be true. All right, Bitcoin over here, still same thing. Remember, we're looking at the bull flag, in spirit of bull flag. It is rejecting from the zone. You have a touch from that trend line over there. Failure to get back above those EMAs. I'm gonna zoom into that for you now. So let's zoom in. Failure to get back above those EMAs, they are starting to spread. That is a clear and concise rejection, which means now we need to look lower. We need to come back down possibly to this 26.2, but hopefully not on a closing basis. Hopefully we just wick into that, bounce up and then reclaim. Otherwise it's risk towards the downside. Low targets is the middle of this channel, 26.2. Next target is the 200 EMA. $25,200. Uh, that's Bitcoin below its pivot level. Pivot levels at 20, let's round it up, 27,000. Ethereum, Ethereum's pivot level is coming in at 1880. It's still holding those EMAs again, suggesting that definitely has more strength than what Bitcoin has at the moment. Look at the demand coming off of the 24 EMA, which is the pink one over there. Uh, let's see if Ethereum can bounce and hold above that pivot level. Okay, moving on. What happened? Did I break something, Josh? Let me just see, guys. I might have kicked a plug. Did I kick a plug off? Okay, I did. I turned it back on, guys. Sorry, I hit, I hit a plug with my foot. Luckily, we have backup power batteries and UPSs. Otherwise, everything would have gone off here. Um, all right, Bitcoin over here still below the range. Remember, we're viewing this as an entire range. This is the range. We've broken below the mid-range price needs to get back above this mid-range over here. Once you do that, you break the diagonal and then it will be looking good. That's just a quick update on the daily chart over there. Four-day chart, four-day chart, again, clear rejection from that 50 EMA. We cannot get back above the 250 EMA. If you want a healthy trending environment for Bitcoin, we need to see price get back above those EMAs. Uh, let's have a look quickly, switch over here. And I want to look at um, ETH. So ETH, you can see ETH got the golden cross 
between the 50 and the 200 EMA on the four hour chart. And it is continuing to hold this. Expect that once it comes down into this 15, 1857 level, you might see a bit of a bounce, a reclaim of that EMA like that. So once you start to get back above, uh, again, indicative that ETH is definitely outperforming Bitcoin, at least right now in the short term. And then I wanted to also focus on the uh, liquidation levels, right? And the heat map. So you can see there is a possibility of a big short squeeze. It's not a matter of if, but when. I'm going to show you exactly why when you look at the negative funding rates, but you're looking at about 28,150 to 28,200 as an upside target. Expect that price could potentially push back up into that zone. Look how that lines up over here with Bitcoin, right? 28,200 is coming in around this zone over here. So that is your mid-range level right into the mid-range level and then possible rejection again from that zone so short-term traders start to position yourself with the possibility that price could go up to that level look at the binance negative funding rates over here for bitcoin so if we use high block capital Okay, you can see over here, it's just gone negative. So guys are again starting to short the market. Uh, we were long positive funding rates. Price then came down, flipped to negative funding rates. Now you want to start to look towards the upside. A whole lot of liquidity in this upper region over here. We're sitting with uh, currently long, or at least if, if you liquidate the shorts, $270 billion worth of liquidations. On the upside, the downside is $263 billion worth of liquidations, which means that price most likely will be stuck within a range. The order block that we had this morning, you have a 9% order block over here. That's 9% of the total volume from the prior order blocks, which led to the sell-off. We are currently coming into a diagonal over here, but it doesn't look to me like it's necessarily going to hold for very long. Why do I say that? Well, if you look at the prior wicks, that was a wick price bounced off aggressively. You got a wick, price bounced off aggressively. And now you have closing candles coming into that region, suggestive that you're most likely gonna have continuation. If you have that continuation, remember, we're just treating it as a range. Uh, the range low is coming in at 25,857. And then you have your range high at 29,980. And your mid range, your mid range is really the level that led to the major sell off, 27,900. So I am expecting at some point that we're going to squeeze back up into this level. It's just a question of how far do we go? Do we first go all the way down to the range low? But ultimately, we eventually uh, resolve this by coming back up into this level, capturing the liquidity. You can see the order block over here. Um, this is Lux Algo, by the way, guys. Started to experiment with Lux Algo. It's one of their trading indicators. It draws out the exact price uh, levels for you. It shows you where the order blocks were that led to the breakdown. So oftentimes price reverts back to those order blocks. It's all in alignment with what you're seeing over here if you look at high block capital. All right, so that's Bitcoin. I think we're done with Bitcoin. I wanted to go over a couple of things with the altcoins, one of which is uh, what McKenna says over here. The best time to buy blue chips in size is when the market becomes disinterested. You have now Arbitrum, Orbital layer three. So have a look at this all time high in total value locked. It's a vibrant and growing ecosystem with steadily climbing transactions and users showing real time adoption. So. You can't deny what you see on DeFi Llama. The trend is towards the upside. Transactions are ticking on up and people are definitely using Arbitrum. So have a look at that there. Interest is completely weaned off. Uh, if you look at the CVD spot, it's been selling off. Look at the funding rates. Lack of interest in the market. Nobody is trading that coin. So have a look over here. Here is Arbitrum. I outlined it's pretty much within a range, right? Still a pretty new coin. So not necessarily something that you want to go in with your life savings or, or mortgage your house and basically put everything into this coin. But if you are looking at it as a trade, simply put, it's stuck within a very clearly defined range. You got the one. 0.06 level, $1.06 as your range low. You have $1.74 as your range high. And then you have your mid range at 140. You have a very simple trend line, which is coming into play right now. So taking from low 
to next low, next low, and you would expect that somewhere around here would be your buy zone at about $1.15. As long as, as Arbitrum holds that level, then you have a potential play where you could take this back up towards the mid-range. In the event of a short squeeze within Bitcoin, you can expect that will push up towards that $1.40 level. So keep an eye on that. Other coins to watch. You got the metaverse coins moving ahead of the massive uh, Apple announcement, which is coming out today. And that is, these are the coins you want to look at. Internet Computer, ApeCoin, Sandbox, Render, Decentraland, Stacks, and Axie Infinity. So I'm not going to go through all the charts on those, but I did pick out one for you. It's called High. Let's have a look at that. This one is currently coming directly into the zone. It is a potential trade opportunity. If you want to really, really get the best entry, what you could do, you might miss the trade though, but if you wait for a retest into that trend line coming in around this $2 level, that could be the opportunity to go long and we're targeting up towards that $2.79 level. This has been dropped in the Discord. Speaking of which, if you want access to the Discord, uh, check out any one of our sponsors, one of which I do recommend is OKX. Um, OKX currently have a promotion at the moment where you sign up. You can get up to $30,000 in sign-up bonuses. Uh, all you need to do is go through to the YouTube description, click on the link below, um, check it out. They have mystery boxes. Uh, they have a whole bunch of different prize offerings for OKX, so make sure that you check that out. Uh, that will get you into the Discord private group and then you'll see the trade uh, which we've dropped over there. Next, I wanted to touch on Atomic Wallet as well. So Atomic Wallet over the course of the weekend, they stated that they received reports of wallets being compromised and they're making every effort that they can to investigate and analyze the situation. So basically a lot of hacks went down. Um, and if you look over here at the hacks, this is from Zach XBT. He says the largest single victim that he observed uh, got taken for 2.8 million USDT. Multiple others have lost six figures across different chains uh, and then basically Basically, he just thanks them for sending the information so he can help to track this. Now, what I wanted to say, guys, make sure if you're not already protected within crypto, uh, part of, of these insane gains that you get in crypto is having the knowledge and understanding of how to be responsible for your own funds. So a couple of ways, mitigate, mitigate your risk across multiple different exchanges. That's the first thing, right? You don't want to put your entire net worth on one exchange. Look at FTX. Everybody thought FTX was the best exchange that was out there, best user interface. Even some of the guys that I worked with over here had their whole net worth on FTX. Luckily, they got it off, but most of those people lost all their money. So sp split your risk. That's the first point. Second point, put as much as you can onto a ledger. So use a ledger, Trezor, any sort of hardware wallet um, and use two-factor authenticators. Do not merge it with your SIM card. They do SIM swaps. They can hack you like that. And then use a VPN as well to protect your IP address. Uh, we partnered with NordVPN. So if you do want to check out NordVPN, you get some sort of special if you use my link below. Check that out. Make sure that you stay protected because there is a lot that's going on. Look at this. More than 12,450,600 dollars has been lost in crypto due to rug pulls in 2023 alone. Never want to be a victim. He says here, in less than five minutes, he'll show you how to use bubble maps to avoid losing your hard earned money. Now, this is an amazing tool as well that you can use to protect yourself. Um, I'm just going to go straight through to it. Essentially, if you look at this video, I don't even think we need sound, but have a look at this video. You can click on any coin. So let's see, he's gonna go through to different coins. Loyal, that's the coin he wants to click on. Now it shows you the number of links and integrations to that particular project and wallet. And if you click on PSYOP, there you go, PSYOP Deployer. This basically suggests that there's too many connections and therefore a high probability that there's gonna be a hack and compromise on this token if you were to be purchasing this token. So to avoid rug pulls, these are kind of the things you need to do, right? You need to you need to take responsibility and understand what you're doing. Don't play around with your main wallet uh, in little meme coin markets. Have a look at this. I'm going to retweet this. Feel free. I always give the guys a like and retweet. Go have a look at that. Go in depth. It will show you exactly. It basically says that uh, it, it suggests that in that case, too many interactions, too many connections to that one wallet, therefore drop it, don't even interact with it because it is probably gonna result in being a hack. 
And that's it from me, folks. That's a wrap. I think it was an alpha pack show. If you think it was an alpha pack show, do me a massive favor. Drop a comment of what you liked in the show so I know to do more of it. Drop a comment of what you want charted in the next show, which is coming up tomorrow. And then on top of that, share this with a non-crypto related friend and help them to get into crypto because the more people you share this with, the sooner that we can get this market back on track and hopefully get the ball rolling again. So that's it from me, folks. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you. I will see you all tomorrow. Have a great day and cheers for now.